So our mind very often goes to the negative. Oh my God, the disaster, the disaster, the disaster. And what if, what if, what if, if we only gave 20% of what the energy for the positive thoughts of what if can happen for the positive, like we give for the negative, what if the disasters happen? Let's take the 20%, 30% or do the whole thing and just hyper what if for the positive yes, yes. and invite yes. it, invite it. Hello, and thank you for joining me here on Hope to Recharge podcast, the podcast that's designed to break the stigma around mental health and to create some hope and inspiration and give some practical tips to those that are struggling with mental health, whether it's from personal stories to break the stigma or some advice from professionals in the mental health community. Whether you are struggling with mental health on your own or you know a loved one that is struggling, we are here to support you and to create a community so you you know you are not alone. The road to recovery can be difficult and challenging. At Hope to Recharge, we believe that in mental health, together is always better. I'm your host, Matana. Thank you for joining me here today. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me here again. This is a very last minute. What do you say? Prompto? Is that a word? Um, You know, I'm the worst person with words like this. I always say the wrong thing. Like if there's like a saying that everybody knows, I always say the wrong thing and pronounce it wrong and everything. So I'm the wrong person to ask. Pronto. Pronto means fast. Let's, yeah. So that... Let's say pronto. It sounds fun. Okay. So pronto. So... um. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I decided to have Heather on today, because the last seven or eight weeks was all about grief, such a hot, heavy topic. First of all, I want to introduce yes. Heather. Heather, for all of my listeners that know Heather, so say hello to Heather. We've had her before. Hello, hello Heather. She's with her coffee, with her headset. Heather is the one that took me from a to Z when I had my dream to start this podcast. I reached out to her. You can listen to one of the episodes. I don't remember which one. Just put in Heather Parody in Spotify under Hope to Recharge and you'll find that episode. And you'll hear our history of how I found Heather and how she walked me through this journey of podcasting. We knew... Oh, and, and episode 100. Is it episode 100 or something like that, Heather? Yeah, I interviewed you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So go to episode 100. You'll, you'll hear our history. We knew that even though she took me from zero to 100, literally, to production, to success, to getting everything rocking and rolling, and she's my producer, she's my coach, she's my mindset, she's my friend now, she's my positive energy, she's a lot in my life, but I knew that it won't, this relationship of her being my producer is going to have to end soon because... Heather is going on to bigger and better and more exciting adventures in her life. And I she would say better or exciting. I knew you're gonna stop. I knew I knew you're gonna stop me there. And I'm gonna say better because right now for you, uh, it's bigger and better. At the time, it was great. But for you, where you are now, and that's where I want to take this conversation that that things evolve. So I I knew you I knew Heather's gonna stop me at bigger and better. And I knew she's going to do that. Thank God I know her so well. So I was prepared for that. <laughs> but the reason why I want to say better because we evolve and what's better for us a year ago can be not good for us now. And I think it's very important lesson that we need to learn. But before we get into that, I want to just say, so we had a few episodes, I think it was seven or eight episodes about grief. What a heavy topic. Oh my God. Like I felt like I need a breather. And then I realized that September is suicide awareness month. So we're going to be talking about another heavy topic, which is suicide awareness and, and stories and hope and it, it, another heavy topic. And I'm like, okay, I need a little bit of a, a breather, literally a breather just to live in gratitude. I miss my attitude of gratitude. I miss my weekly inspiration that I used to send to Heather. We decided due to COVID, we're going to drop that. And and over the weekend, um, after processing that Heather is no longer going to be my producer and we found somebody new and she's going to continue being a coach and the background vision of Hope to Recharge. But there was a part of me that was going into grief. Like I was really grieving Heather. You're so and I, sweet. <laughs> and people were like, but she's alive. I said, yeah, but this <laughs> is what people don't understand about grief. It doesn't have to be death. It right. could be a dream. It could be something that you loved so much. It could be just a time like camp. You know, I'm sitting in this beautiful background in upstate New York. And you're going to, by the way, we're not editing this episode. 
we're just you're going to hear the kids the 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 animals in the background the ocean the the lake you're gonna hear everything those are my favorite episodes I love that <laughs> yeah so we decided that we're just gonna do a, a real maybe we'll do even the, this video because mm -hmm. it's, it'll show what it is you're gonna hear my kids in the background and that's okay but what I was realizing that after Heather editing and the producing and and all that that Heather gave her heart and soul and I, the trust, the trust that I had in Heather that I could just drop it off by her and she would just go fly. Like you don't understand. No one understand what goes behind unless you're a podcast. You don't understand. So I was grieving Heather. And I kept on texting her, like, I'm grieving. I'm grieving that you're leaving my my weekly like connection with you. And it was a big deal for me, Heather. It was you're really so sweet. <laughs> I mean, to be, uh, to be honest with you, it's, it's hard for me too, because like, honestly, I've transitioned out of producing podcasts for a while now. Like, um, I've wanted to stay working with you just because I like you. <laughs> so this isn't for me, for like, for my business and what I've been doing. I haven't really been doing this kind of work for, for a, a while. Um, I've turned down clients and not been working doing that anymore. But I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to keep my tana because I love her so much. And she's you're even so great. And like I, I've told you many times before, um, I've never met anyone more grateful than you. Hands down, never in my life. I've never had somebody thank me so many times for something that I'm supposed to do. Like I just do the work. And you're like, thank you. Thank you. And I'm like, well, I'm supposed to do this. And you're like, I know, but I'm so grateful. And it was just like, wow. And I even wrote in my journal because I write every day in my journal and I was rereading last year's and I even wrote something about you. I was like, I've learned so much about gratitude from Montanana. I wrote oh, that thank last you. Year, thank which you. Which is translated into uh, my husband and I making more of a priority to teach our children gratitude. Now we're practicing gratitude with them every night. We weren't doing that before I met you. So now they're learning about gratitude. And so that's something that I can just credit you for. Um, and I'm so grateful for, but like I said, uh, it, it's not a, it's not a closing door. It's just a transition into something new. And so looking at it as a, a new relationship where you and I hopefully can start talking about like, you know, big picture stuff with everything, which is really, really exciting. Um, and what I'm really passionate about too, I just read in this, uh, this latest book that I'm reading that with, within mental health, uh, there's been studies done where when you could tap into creativity and, you know, your, your inner work, a lot of, you know, a lot of some, some symptoms of mental health can start subsiding because you're tapping into that creative piece, which I think is why your work is so important because, you know, not only for your listeners, but also for you to be able to see what you've created and how that's, you know, brought out another side of Matana that um, wasn't it maybe there before, or maybe was quiet or maybe a little bit, you know, subdued. So it's just been, it's been a really cool journey and I'm really um, honored to have been part of it. Thank you. You're so, you're so amazing. And one of the things that I want my listeners to learn that I knew nothing about podcasting before I started with you. And I still know very little besides interviewing, but you trusted in me and I trusted in you. And that trust, that trust is something that if you find it in your lifetime, you're lucky. And I kept on journaling trust. I trusted, I trust. I kept on seeing that word trust. And I realized that I knew that even if I messed something up, I trusted that Heather has my back to either let me know, fix it for me, show up the best for me. And I just like having a team member that you know that has the same mindset, has the same you're very clear on your goals together to have that gift to find somebody so early on in my podcasting world was such a treasure for me. And Heather runs um, the unconventional leader group. I think how many, how many members are of the group now? Over 1600. Yeah. A lot of people that are really unconventional, like unconventional in their leadership. And, and, I kept on saying like, how lucky was I that not only is she a producer, not only does she have her own podcast and not only can she coach me on podcasting, but she's a real leader. She's a leader. And so many times I would come onto a call and I would like, uh, and she would feel my energy either very high or depleted. And she would bring me back to the center and say, okay, what do we have to work on now? Where are we holding now? I keep on saying that it's such a miracle for me that in the mental health journey that I'm doing with Hope to Recharge, you are my mentor showing up with it in my in my business, in the podcast world. Like the worlds collided. Um, um, Simon Siddick talks about it a lot. If you see when your worlds collide, there's some, like there's an energy, an extra added energy. And I really felt like my podcasting, my emotional, my mental, my growth, my business, everything was colliding by having you. 
And on Friday, I don't know if you guys watched, I was really grieving on Friday. I woke up so sad on Friday. And I said to Harry, what am I sad about? I have like so many things coming up in the next three months. Like I should be jumping on rooftops. So yeah. excited. I'm like, what is going on? It's Friday. I love Friday. I love the weekend. I had the best week. What is going on? I couldn't. He's like, I don't know what's going on. Are you okay? I said, no, I'm really not okay. Something's off. And I tried like pushing it off and nothing was like, I didn't. And then I said, no, don't push it off. Go sit with it. And I went outside to write. And right away, within two minutes, I found out that I'm, I'm grieving the fact that Heather is really not going to be in my inbox twice a week. Like we're not going to have that. I'm going to lose that trust and I'm going to have to build it with someone new. Losing that, like knowing that you built something, like really, I built a trust with you. And, and now I'm going to have to learn to trust somebody else. And now to, you get to, now you get to, because I now it's going to be a new relationship that who knows, it could be so much even better and more exciting and take you to the next level than you even know. So, but it's a transition that could be it is. really it is. hard, really yeah. hard. And to know that it's, that it's different, you know, um, talking about grief, a lot of the things that I spoke about during grief was when, we move on, like we have memories from somebody, like a loved one that passed away. And let's say it was a spouse and they're remarrying. What happens when they, when they move forward? They're choosing to move forward. And, and then what happens? They're not replacing it with the identical. They know that they have to relearn the same things that they built with that other person, but different. It's going to be different and trusting in that process that it's going to be different and it's not going to be the same. The new producer is never going to be Heather and that's okay. And I need to tell myself, it's okay. There's a learning curve and it's a growth. And I know that it's going to take me to a higher level of me needing to show up better for me. Heather was super nice to me and super flexible with me and super understanding with me. And now I have to be more organized. Now I have to be more planned out. Now I, now I have to, like, there are going to be so many things that I have to level up, which Heather loves that word, level up. And That's I use the best it. A, word. <laughs> <laughs> and I really need to be more responsible for what I'm showing up with. And it's uncomfortable. It's not fun. But isn't that the journey in life of doing the uncomfortable, the stepping out of what feels comfortable to the uncomfortable place in order to see what else is out there? Living with mental illness can be full of pain, frustration, and anguish. At times, it can feel like you are completely alone. Well-meaning loved ones may not understand what you are going through and might not be able to offer the support you need. Finding the right source of support is crucial to your journey of healing. While we always encourage you to seek appropriate medical and psychological help, adding someone to your team who has been where you are can provide a much needed shoulder to lean on. Matana knows what it is like to feel debilitating anxiety and through her own journey of more than a decade living with mental illness, she has spoken with hundreds of others navigating their own anxiety and depression. Matana is not a therapist or a doctor, but has been able to partner with many individuals like yourself, creating a strategy toward mental, physical, and emotional well-being. One-on-ones with Matana are self-paced conversations, allowing you to move forward at a comfortable pace. She'll work with you as you discover your own path and the steps that are right for you. To schedule a free 30-minute consultation with Matana, head over to hopetorecharge.com forward slash free. That's hope to recharge.com forward slash F R E E. Or you can click the link in today's show notes. And now let's get right back to Matana and today's conversation. Yeah. I mean, and allowing and being okay with a certain amount of void, uh, that something can come back into the place. And this is such a silly, 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 silly example, but, um, you know, me when I was, when I was in my goodness, I think I was 19 years old or something. I had moved away from home and I was, I went to, um, some sort of a equivalent of like a seminary for, um, my, my religion 
or my religious organization at the time. And I, I spent two years away and I didn't work. I was essentially working as a missionary and I didn't have any money coming in and I was super poor and I was um, living in a church. There was a room there. It was crazy. It was just this crazy thing that I went through. Anyway, I remember praying and saying like, oh, I, I just really wish I had new clothes because I didn't have enough money to buy some new clothes. And I was, mine were getting worn out and everything. Um, and I heard um, God, universe, whatever you want to say it is, um, I heard really clear, well, get, give the ones that you have and clear space for the new. And I was like, are you serious? Like, I don't have anything. You want me to give my clothes away where I literally have no clothes. And I did like, I pulled, picked up all my clothes and I gave them. Um, it was within, uh, just a few hours, I got a phone call from someone and they said, Hey, the university down the road, there was this very rich, very, very updo university. It was mid semester. And apparently there was this thing that the girls would always do where they would just take all their clothes and they would put them in the hallways for anybody to come and grab. And so me, this 19 year old girl, I went down to this college, I went up and down the hallways and I came home or back to my place with five large, huge bags of brand new clothes. So many of them didn't have, they had tags still on them. They were way more expensive than anything that I was able to have, but such a silly example, but I'll never forget that because I remember that if there was something that I desired, I first needed to give it away and create space for something new. And uh, that's, you know, translated into a lot of other areas of my life right now. But even with something like this, you know, creating space, and even though it feels like a void and there's grief in that, that it's providing something new and fresh to come in. Uh, and that hanging, that anticipation, because it hasn't happened yet, is sometimes painful, but trusting and knowing that uh, it's on its way. It's so powerful because we, I know that we, we believe in energy and mindset. And we, we really like, I think that's why we got along so well because we feel, we consumed ourselves with positive positive thoughts, positive dreams, um, positive people. Like we chose who we're going to hang out with. We chose what we're going to read. We chose what we're going to listen to. And we decided we're like, we're going to choose only good things to go through our minds so we can output good. And it's a, it's a constant choice. It is a choice and it's the real work. That's the real stuff. We always think it's this external thing, but the real work is all of that. Uh, what some people might see is just, oh, fluffy, foo-foo, whatever. But actually that's the basis of it all. And, and what the story you just told was exactly that. You need to make room, like you really need to clear out, to declutter, to, to, to get rid of. And that's, and even though like there's something so comfortable doing things that we know and it are it quote unquote easy, but maybe that be time consuming, but like, oh, we know this and it could be in relationships. It can be in, in our mental health. I'm going to take this back to mental health. Oh, we know how to get through a panic attack. So we're not going to try something new. But maybe we should try something new. Maybe we should start living in uncomfortable matters in order to invite something so refreshing and healing into our practices of healing. Well, I think you said it too, just a few episodes ago, you talked about how you've always kind of welcomed in unknown and stuff where a lot of people, there's like this automatic label that unknown means bad. And you've been able to kind of question that thought and say, like, you know what? Unknown actually could be something so amazing. <laughs> I love the unknown because I, yeah. I tell people, even though it can feel a little bit uncomfortable, but it's my time that I dream big. I'm like, Oh, wow, this is so exciting. Let's see. So our mind very often goes to the negative. Oh my God, the disaster, the disaster, the disaster. And what if, what if, what if, if we only gave 20% of what the energy for the positive thoughts of what if can happen for the positive, like we give for the negative, what if the disasters happen? Let's take the 20%, 30% or do the whole thing and just hyper what if for the positive yes. and invite yes. it, invite it. So yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's not fun. Do you think I want to say goodbye to Heather as my producer? Do you think I want to just record and say, okay, she'll take care of everything when I say everything is everything? I literally don't listen to the episode until it is published. Do you understand the amount of trust I have in Heather? But I'm going to need to learn trust again with a new person. And if it might be different, our practices might be different, but it's such it was such a an epiphany for me of what I was I was grieving trust that I had like somebody that got my back and hopefully I'll have it with the new producer hopefully you will. hopefully you yeah will. hopefully you I will. will but it was that and I gave myself permission to be sad on Friday I really gave myself permission to say it's okay it's really okay you're allowed to be sad transitions 
are hard. And we're not saying jump through joy when you're when you're going through a hard time. No, give it space. Give it space to give it names, to know what was hard because when you know what is hard that you're going to miss, that's how you're going to show up better and know how to plan that it comes out okay instead of being in that unknown like what what I'm not sure what's going on I'm just not feeling good it's really frustrating something's bothering me and I don't know what it is but when when I was sitting down and I was writing I realized and my tears were coming down my tears my tears my tears so I said I need to have a closure with Heather and I want Heather to come on here and I am so grateful that it happened so like last minute and Heather cleared the schedule that we can drop this episode before the next month, the next topic. And Heather is going to be behind our Hope to Recharge. She's going to be the vision and helping me through. She's going to help me grow. She's going to really dig deep into the places of scare, like where I'm scared and say, we can do this, you can do that. And that that's what she does in her unconventional leader group. And Heather, I want you to share with my audience what you're on to next. Where, where were you the last three years and what you're on to next? Oh, goodness. So the last three years have really just been, you know, it, it's it's interesting. It's like you, you kind of figure out your vision as you execute things, you know, and I think you can... <laughs> understand that. Um, you know, the first I, I turned down two job offers three years ago. Yeah. So I was a therapist and got my license and was going to do that. And I was like, you know what? I really feel called into the online space. And so the first couple of years, there's a whole bunch of different things. I've done, you know, producing work like this, um, some coaching strategy, all kinds of different things. But I've really felt um, that I've done well with more high level kind of strategy behind building brand online and figuring out ways to make money and uh, kind of drive everything towards one one place. So I'm leaning into that. I'm working one on one with a lot of people, and I love it. It's so much fun. And then on just a personal note, I've really been uh, pouring every ounce and every second into unconventional leaders because I love leaders. I think. Um, people who are going against the grain and doing things in their spare time when they don't have to, man, that's, that's what changes the world. And so people like you, Montana, that, you know, you don't have to do any of this. You don't have to, you have all those sweet babies in the back and you could, you know, be hanging out and doing this stuff or, and there's nothing, there's no right or wrong, but the fact that you have that calling on your life is something that I just want to fan that flame in others, you know, and say, Hey, go for it, do it because the impact and the ripple effect of that, I mean, that's what really changes this world is everyday people stepping up and doing extraordinary things. So yeah, it's an honor what I do. And who knows in five years where I'll be, I have no idea, but uh, you know, like we've been talking about, it's always an evolution and just being obedient to the task at hand and being faithful and trusting that there's something else greater that's leading and guiding and directing and that we can't mess it up. Yeah. Are you going into major course creation for yourself and others? Is that one of your things that you really enjoy doing? Because I know you did a phenomenal job in so many. Yeah. So we have a we have a mastermind group with uh, some content there. And then I have a podcasting course. Um yeah, those are the two things that I have. But mostly I do is just the one-on-one work with people. Heather, you posted a question. Was it this morning? What are you going to see yourself? What do you want to see yourself in 10 years? What was the question? Something about yeah, 10 years from 10 now. Years, 10 years, where do you want to be? What's your vision? What's your vision? I want to have a traveling show where I can travel all over the world and talk one-on-one. I want to be sitting there at that table with you and sitting out on that porch with the air and I want it to be recorded and I want to I want to do that. So I want to tell stories. Um, I really want to get into the production piece with photography and video and really learning how to capture story in that piece. I'm fascinated with imagery. I think imagery is beautiful. Like I just want to take your picture right now with you sitting there. So it's so nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are those are things that I, I'm really interested in, and I'm, I'm honored to get to do the other work that I do that pays me to do that in my spare time. So I do a lot of creative, fun stuff on the side that hopefully one day I'll be able to do and monetize. So that'll be the goal. Wow. When you say a traveling show, you mean you'll go to people to like, let's say you'll go to Oprah Winfrey and like interview her on her, Mm -hmm. on her island, wherever she is, or you'll be the one traveling to them versus doing Zoom. It's going to be a one in-person show and you get to be with them. Oh, you, do an interview with you, get to take your picture and share your oh. story. And like, that's what I want to do. 
Yeah. Oh, you're so going to be there way before 10 years, like way, way, oh, yes. way, way, way before 10 yes. years. Yes. Oh Amen. my God. That is so, <laughs> and I want to just highlight before we say goodbye, because we have to say goodbye in one minute. I mean, not goodbye, lehitra ot in Hebrew, we say see you soon. Lehitra ot is like too later. Lehitrio? Le, lehitra ot. We, we shall be Trio. seen. We shall be seen soon. Le, lehitra That's ot. Beautiful. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like goodbyes. I say lehitra ot. Like we'll be, we'll see you soon. Yes. Um, but before we, we just say goodbye for this episode, you said something so important that you said you do things that will enable you to do your big dream. So you do things yes. that like to, to create the income that are not yes. the funnest thing, maybe. Yes. Can you just like say that for, like for these people that are listening that are whatever field they're in, it doesn't matter if it's parenting, if it's leadership, if it's entrepreneurship, whatever it is. So many times we need to do things that are not fun in order to get to the, our dream. Just elaborate on that for 30 seconds or a minute, because I think that's so important. Oh, my head is like shaking up and down so much it's about to fall off because I feel like there's so much pressure, especially with, when with the rise of online entrepreneurship and you know the the way that we're easily able to get our messages out there and be a little bit more creative. There's also so much pressure to figure out how to make this into this big six figure or multi million dollar business and monetize and grow at such a rapid rate that we almost lose the creative flow, beauty, heart, soul of originally what we wanted to do because we're trying to push it into like a, a, a corporate, you know, uh, offering so, so fast. And although, yes, we all, I mean, I'm not going to speak for everybody. Many people do want to monetize and monetize fast their work. Um, I think that honoring the time and the season that you're in and really falling in love with the work and giving it breathing room where you're like, you know what, I don't have to make this something that it's not ready for. So you think about um, if my brand were a human, it would only be three years old. And what is my three-year-old doing right now? You know, she still like has accidents and she still stumbles on her words and all of that. And for me not to allow my art and my creativity and my work to grow and develop and mature naturally is putting so much pressure on it to where it's stumping really my bigger why. And so I've, I've really tried reframing that and, and being grateful that I have a skill set where I'm able to do things that, yeah, may not be my long-term goal, but it affords me the opportunity to have the space to do this. I mean, literally, I'm sitting here in my home. I have my office. I have clients I work with, but I make my own schedule. I'm taking my child to karate later. I, I can do that. You know, I can work on my podcast. And sometimes I, I think that I'm way behind other people because they're wherever they're at without really being like what you talk about, grateful that I can even do this. Like it's an honor to get to even do this because how many people have the luxury of having the internet and having a computer and having a spouse that supports them? And, you know, some of these things that I just honestly take for granted. So, Yes, I'm going to get to where I need to be, but I want it to be within the right time and um, also just be really, 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 really grateful for what I do have right now. Yeah. And, and, and know that it takes a lot of messy steps to get to that goal. It takes a lot of uncertainty and things that we don't love doing, but we know that we're good at and we're going to do it anyway. And that's okay. I just wanted to wrap up that Seth Godin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Simon Siddick had a beautiful episode recently. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about that the highs and the lows in entrepreneurship, that the highs are so high and the lows are so low. So find the re real, the good people to hold you up when you fall so yes. low. And you were that for me. You were really that mm -hmm. for me, Heather. And I'm so grateful to God that he sent me to you so easily. It was just one email or a text or about a DM. It was one and it just was boom. I didn't have to look into anybody else. And it was boom. Heather was there from start to finish. And if not for Heather, I don't know where I would be now, but I'm so You'd grateful. You'd be where you're at because you're <laughs> <laughs> Heather, thank you for being with Hope to Recharge. Thank you for trusting in me. Thank you for gifting me you for so long. So many, so many hours into the production of Hope to Recharge. On the name of the community, I am thanking you for being a part of us. Thank you. I will miss you. I love you. I am grateful and I can't wait to see where we're going to be recording in 10 years. I'm telling you, when COVID's over, I'm going to come visit you and meet you in real life because I feel like I already know you in real life. It's crazy. We never met. We never met. <laughs> never met. Never met. Yes. So grateful for you, Matana. Thank you. Thank you for joining me here and we will see you in September. Okay. Thank you all. Bye till next time. 
Thank you for joining us and taking the time to listen. I really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button so you can hear further episodes. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please leave feedback and ratings below. Let us know if there's any topic that you would like to hear from us in the future. Bye till next time.